Hi everyone, it's Diane Lasovatique, and today we're going to redo the dining room table for the fall season. First, I want you to know that I'm aware of the noise and the background that you might be hearing in this video, and I'm gonna to try to do my best to reduce that. Um, I'm videoing from my house and I don't have um, an echo resistant room. It just seems to echo in here, so I apologize for that. But what we're going to do today is we're going to take my selected 115 inch wide petite cotton fabric, turn it into a tablecloth, and possibly some additional napkins that will coordinate with the table setting. And as you know, if you follow our Fabric Friday, I selected the Waning Autumn Gardenies Divine fabric because it goes with my chairs so well, so well, so well. I didn't realize how nicely it went. And so what we're gonna do today, I'm gonna show you how I measure. I'm going to show you how I cut it out and then I'm going to show you how I finish the edge of it using either a serger or your traditional sewing machine um, with a fancy foot on your sewing machine or simply with the turn and press method. So any way that you want to make this very very simple tablecloth you should do it because there is nothing more fun than adding a simple touch of you with a piece of fabric to your home. And so that's what we're gonna do today. So let's get started. Here we go. I have removed all of the miscellaneous things that I keep on my table for decoration. So all of those are done. I have left over my blue tablecloth. Let me talk a little bit about this blue tablecloth. I always, in between decorating for an event, which I don't have very many of, but for a holiday, let's say, for Thanksgiving or Christmas or Easter or just a summer event, I always have this blue tablecloth on. And what this is, is my favorite tablecloth. It is what I also call my template. My template tablecloth. I call it a template because I only wanna measure my table once and I wanna have my favorite tablecloth that I can use as my guide for all future tablecloths. If you have a square, a rectangle table, you may already have your perfect tablecloth. Use that as your guide. Measure that, or you can measure your table again, that's, that's fine too, but one or the other, you're going to have your perfect tablecloth measurement. Same thing with your round. You may have a round table that's perfect for you and a round tablecloth that fits that perfectly. But if not, let's go through some measurements. What I'm going to show you here, I'm not gonna take you and walk you around my table to do the measuring. Visually, I'll put up a picture, but visually, here's what we're going to do. And, uh, but I do wanna talk about one thing here. I use a carpenter's uh, tape measure when I do this project for one reason. I'm measuring it myself and I need a way to hook my tape measure on the edge of my table. When I'm using my sewing tape measures, the ones that are cloth, um, none of them are stiff enough in order to give me the right measurement. If you have a yardstick at home, you can probably use your yardstick, but it needs to be something that can sit while you pull your tape measure without it moving across the table with you. So my dad <laughs> was a finished carpenter and um, his shop is filled with these. And so, sorry mom, but I borrowed one. And uh, it's perfect. So here's what I did originally to make my template tablecloth. Let's measure across the width of our table and hook this on the edge and get our measurement. My table measurement is width is 60 inches. Do the same thing for your length. Again, doesn't matter if it's round, square, rectangle, or oval. 
find your center point and let's measure across. Mine is 96 inches. There's a third measurement that we need to have and it's drop. If you were to Google the phrase, what's my tablecloth drop? What should that measurement be? You'll get various answers from various people. I use a technique that works for me. So let's take our tape measure, set it in front of you as you're sitting on your chair, as if you were having dinner, and just don't press it in there, but just set it on top. Then take a look at where is your measurement. My drop to my lap from the top of the table is six and a half inches, okay? I am going to make sure that mine finishes to six inches because I don't want it touching me. I just want it slightly above, okay? We don't want any issues with somebody um, pulling the tablecloth off when they sit down. It can't be too long because it just causes problems. And we don't want it to be too short because then, well, first of all, it looks funny. I can say that. And we don't want to always be fussing to make sure that every side fits the same distance around. So six inches for me works. So with my measurements, now follow, do the same thing so that you know what yours should be. So you're going to have your width, mine is 60, my length is 96, my drop is six inches. So when I write down how large does my tablecloth need to be, it is... Here's where we do a little bit of math. We need a drop, we need the width, and we need a drop. So six inches plus 60 inches plus six inches to me is 72. My length, which is six inches plus 96 inches plus six inches is 108. So I need a piece of fabric that's going to be at least finishing to 72 inches by 108. Now let's talk about yardage. If you don't want to put a seam in your tablecloth, work with a wide fabric. So Batique wide fabric is 115 inches wide. So I'm going to cut from our fabric, and this is what I did with this blue tablecloth, I'm going to cut slightly more than 72 inches. I'm gonna cut 90 inches, which is two and a half yards. And I, you could work with two and a quarter. I could have done two and a quarter as well of uh, fabric. And my 115 inches that we have will work perfectly. I can have one piece of fabric, no seams, and I have a beautiful tablecloth. So what I'm going to do is I actually cut for this um, Garden East Divine waning autumn fabric that I'm going to use for Thanksgiving, I cut two and a half yards off our bolt in the office. And I washed it because it will shrink a little bit. You wanna get any shrinkage out of it, just like it, if you were making a garment or you're making a quilt or a wall hanging, we gotta get rid of the shrink. So I have pre-washed it, it shrunk three inches and I am ready to iron it up and start um, the next process, which is creating my template to cut my oval out. If you have a square and rectangle table, you don't have to follow this section of the video. Jump to how to finish the edge of your tablecloth. But if you do have a round or an oval table, let's get started on this process. What I do and what I have found to be the easiest method of making sure that the shape of my tablecloth matches my table is to lay my fabric on the table, make sure that the length is down, make sure that your width is sufficient. And what I mean by that, it must be sufficient enough to make sure that you have your drop all the way around your table. Now remember, you're working with a large piece of fabric, so just make sure that it is centered. 
Okay, so let's find your, this is a dress markers pencil or this is a tracing pencil, okay? And, or if you have a tailor's chalk at home, the tailor's chalk is the perfect way to do this because it has a longer edge. It's typically the shape of a triangle and you can just simply follow the edge of your table. So I'm going to use this pencil because I don't have my tailor's chalk at home. But what we're going to do is simply take the edge of your pencil and trace. You're going to create a line all the way around very slightly. I don't know if you can see this, but you'll see my actions. You're just tracing the edge of your table onto your fabric. Okay. And you're gonna do this all the way around your table. The next thing we're going to do is we need to create our cut line, which is our tabletop line plus our drop plus a hem allowance. So let's push this back. I wanted a six inch drop, which brings me to here. And then in my little quick guide, I allowed for a half an inch hem. I simply allowed for that in case you decide to use your sewing machine to turn and press a quarter inch and then again, and then top stitch. You'll need a half an inch to get a really nice crisp hem using that method. If you're using your serger, you can use a three thread overlock with a really tight stitch, or you can use a rolled hem, which gives you a really, really nice finish, a sealed finish, and simply set your serger so you're eating up most of that half an inch. Or on your sewing machine, if you have a rolled hem foot, they come in either a eighth inch or a quarter inch distance for your hem, use that because that is going to curl your fabric and stitch it at the same time. And that seals the edge of your fabric inside your hem. So those are the three methods of finishing your hem of your tablecloth that I think, I mean, there's probably many more, but those are the three that I would recommend which, and use whichever one you think is best for you. But going back to here, we need to get our cut line. So let's measure three and a half inches, six and a half inches away from my tabletop line. And I'm just going to put a mark. I measure over, this is what probably takes the most amount of time, is I continue to measure and mark and measure and mark, but in very small increments. And right here... I'll just continue that just a little bit and just make sure that you're getting, getting as close as possible. I don't have a curved edge ruler of any kind. So I'm gonna go back here and play dot to dot and just simply draw a line between my dots, always keeping in mind that it's going to be a curve. And so simply connect your dot to dots that will be your cut mark. This, you got, you do this all the way around your tablecloth and you will have the perfect drop in the shape of your table. I am not going to cut on my table. So I'm gonna take this up to my sewing room and I'm gonna cut around it and we're gonna start hemming. I'm gonna show you four different hems that I prepared as a sample so you can kind of decide what you would like to do to hem your tablecloth. The first two are from a serger. So I didn't make I did not sew them on this traditional sewing machine. I surged I surged them. The first one is a three thread overlock and it's a very narrow three thread overlock. It's about it's a little bit larger than an eighth of an inch. It's not quite a quarter of an inch. And so I set the machine to be a very, very narrow stitch and it just looks beautiful. And the knife on the serger was engaged so that it is creating a, a, just a flat, beautiful edge as it's surging. 
and it's perfect for going around curves. The second one here is the rolled hem. Now, this is the front here, and so you can see that it's a little bit tighter and narrower still. So this is like an eighth of an inch here. And a portion of the fabric is rolled to the back and secured. This is what I chose to hem my tablecloth, the big oval tablecloth. The next two, I'm gonna slide these away here. The first one here I'm going to show you is just a simple, and this was done on the sewing machine here. But what I did is I took this to my ironing board and I pressed a quarter of an inch and then I pressed again a quarter of an inch and simply top stitched all the way along here. This would make a very, very nicely finished tablecloth. Very simple. The next one and the last one, this is my fourth one, is I used the hem foot on my Juki. So what it's doing is it is curling and hemming and stitching all at the same time. And this one I used really beautiful bright thread <laughs> on it so you can see what it looks like. But again, it creates a very nice edge all the way around. So really what you have to think about is the tools that are available to you and how you would simply like to finish the hem. The other thing to consider is the shape of your tablecloth. So if you are working with a, you know, a round or an oval, serging it is really a simple way to finish the hem. But if you're working on a square or rectangle, it's just as easy to just do your pressing and straight stitching with your traditional sewing machine. <laughs> so here we are, and I'm sitting back at the table, and the tablecloth is on the table, and I love it. It really is the right look that I was going for when I selected this fabric in the store. Sometimes you never know. You never know if it's gonna work, if it's gonna be too busy, what is it gonna be? And um, I really do love it. I also, don't laugh at me, but I had to just put a little table setting together so that you could see how this would look with China. And we um, have the great fortune of having these beautiful China plates and set they were a gift from Bruce's parents a long time ago, and they're just perfect for this season. And they're just a beautiful plate set with cups and saucers and everything and, and serving ware that have these beautiful leaves on them. And it really brings out the shade that's inside the motif of this fabric as well. And I just, I love it. And I think it'll be a wonderful table setting. The only hesitation I have is I had enough fabric left over to make four dinner size napkins, which are 18 square or 20 inches square. Um, I can make four. And then I can also make smaller napkins that are more for cocktails or whatever, but they would probably only be about 14 inches square. So it's not technically a traditional dinner napkin, but I think it would be large enough for a meal and to have on your lap as well. 14 inches is a pretty good size, even though it's not technically perfect. But I think they might be too busy. I think the design of the fabric on the tablecloth, it might be too much for a dinner napkin as well. I'm gonna make them, but I'm also going to look for another shade of fabric in our office that might accent the different shades that are, are in the tablecloth as well as in the china and um, soften it up just a bit. Or my other option is to make a charger, a circular charger that kind of softens the difference between the china and the tablecloth itself. We'll see. But I think I, think I really love this and um, it's gonna be a fun, fun, fun table setting. The other thing that I am going to do and look for this in the future here shortly I'm gonna try and do it maybe this week. We'll see how it goes. But do you see this motif 
in the china the leaves they're absolutely gorgeous and the first thing that comes to mind for me is an applique leaf on a napkin or creating an applique shape that matches this that can be used as a table decoration throughout your display. And what I do with my table here typically is I will have a center, like a nice centerpiece because the table is so big, a nice centerpiece with candles um, and just something very subtle so that we can sit around the table and still pass food. Um, but I just thought this would be absolutely gorgeous. And if I used our gradation batiks, which are ombre, so they change shade from light to dark or between colors from salvage to salvage, I could use like our adobe shade or the bark, which is a brown, a rich, rich brown to make this leaf shape and then use stitching inside the leaves to create the veins of the leaf. What a great way to pull the whole thing together. So I don't know if you have China that has a really distinctive design in it or could be anything that you can take as part of your display for your table and incorporate that into an applique project. It, it's like, it just just staring me in the face. So I'm going to try to do that and I'll share that with you on our website and also um, on a future newsletter or video. We'll see how it turns out, but eventually I'll get you a picture of this entire table setting. So, but for now, our tablecloth is done. It's ready to go. We'll get our napkins done and um, we will take it from there. But I hope you enjoy this video. I hope you download the quick guide below and make your own custom tablecloth for your table settings and enjoy and just keep Sewing, smiling, and sharing. <laughs>